Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Is this a dangerous battery? Well, stick around, we're gonna find out today. Let's get right into it. So I've had this battery since June the 1st, part of an off-grid kit from Vita Run that includes a solar panel, an inverter, a very easy DIY you know, solar kit, so I thought. So I've been working on that video for the last few days while I was putting in some, some links to this battery and the inverter and other products. You know, this is a unique battery with the MPPT, so I thought it was pretty cool. And upon looking in Amazon reviews, I saw that this battery had a couple of scathing reviews and some information that it was a firebomb. When I review products, I don't watch any anybody else's reviews on it. I don't read any reviews, anything like that. I try to go into all product reviews unbiased. I didn't crack this battery open during the video that I've not shown you yet. So there is a video with this battery in it in operation with an inverter using its charge controller and all that right there. But I'm not going to post that video until I find out if this battery is dangerous. One YouTuber uh, melted down some wires in this battery. So I'm going to check this battery and see if it has the same problems that the other reviewer had. So I plan to tear this battery down eventually anyhow but upon finding that information and seeing that other video i decided that we need to look at this battery first so uh, you know just fast tracking or switching the arrangement of videos so i'm going to crack it open i'm going to check it out all right literally 30 seconds to get into this one sometimes that's not a good sign when you can get them open real easy so cracking open the lid so we can look at it at the same time together uh, looks a little different than some of the other reviewers, but the BMS is just sitting there flopping around right off the bat. So uh, let's look a little closer into it. So right under the cover right there in this QR code, there's a, what appears to be a production date, 2024. So 9-6 of 2024. And uh, you know, just right off the bat, and you, you, I mean, that's, that's bad right off the start right there. All right, those of you keeping track, let's run a tally count on what I can find in this battery. All right, so one, two, three. And then pulling down the foam onto the BMS right here. It's a JBD Smart BMS. It's got Bluetooth and stuff like that on it, which I just pulled the, the data tag. It's a DP04S uh, model right there. I got some uh, Loctite and stuff around. The terminals right here on the, uh, well, let's count that as number four. I mean, I always do this on all the batteries to see if these terminals are tight. So that one's loose. Uh, of course, I'm going backwards, but they should be torqued down a little bit better than that. So that one's moving a little bit too. And uh, that one's tighter. So those are fairly tight on the on the battery side, but the power lead side, yeah, that's that's not good. Which they weren't very tight at all. Uh, usually uh, it takes uh, a lot higher setting than that to uh, break these screws loose. So not very tight at all, regardless. All right, so I got those wires out of the way. Let's now pull the BMS flop it over to the side so we can look closer down right here. So what is all this down in here? Maybe some remnants of double-sided tape or something they were trying to use. I mean, that's what is what is that doing? right there was that holding anything down no not really there's just junk half half attempt at uh taping down some stuff in there i guess so i don't know you gonna call that number five let's call that number five and pull this right here off of the top of the cell see what kind of qr codes and stuff we got because it's supposed to be grade a cells and things like that so uh well let's call that number six all the qr codes are destroyed on the cell so that's number six so hopefully you can see where they ground off the qr code so high degree of certainty those are recycled cells no doubt they look like garbage look at all the filth up under the relief windows right there um so probably been overheated and abused their entire life just uh, that's just terrible terrible all the way around but i did notice on some of these uh codes right here now you could get a few numbers off of them, but I'm not even wasting time trying to identify the manufacturer. Just, uh, just complete uh, junk right there. So just going through and checking everything for tightness, things like that, making sure nothing else is loose. 
in this thing all the balance leads are good there's a high temp thermal switch not a sensor there's a sensor glued down right there that's a high temp thermal switch for the heating function in case you have an over temp issue going on right there kind of you know it's on there but it wasn't wasn't the greatest and it was on the the bar right there instead of on the cell level uh, well here we go there's i guess that's number seven right there so look at that it got thread locker on it and so loose you just barely touch it and it's moving so yeah number seven and so here's where things get even more interesting down in here this is where uh the issue lies with some other reviewers was that this dc power port right here didn't have any kind of fuses and went straight to the positive terminal of the battery not even controlled uh through the bms well this one the positive lead goes straight to the positive terminal right there the negative lead does go to the power output on the BMS. So if there was a high temp trip or something like that, uh, the BMS is gonna shut power off to all the 12 volt uh, accessories on here because it's got the power port and the USB right there. So, but see, there is no fusing anywhere in this section right here on this positive lead. So if you overloaded that power port right there, you could in fact uh, melt this wire down right here because this is a very small gauge wire, which then again, most of these DC ports are rated for 10 amps and the guy that melted down this wire put way more than 10 amps on that. But uh, yeah, they should have some kind of fuse or something right there, some kind of little resettable breaker or something on the side. Um, having a fuse inside, you'd have to open it up if you blew the fuse, some kind of panel breaker or something like that would have been better, but there's so much else going on. I think this is just a minor little, little issue here compared to uh, everything else. And that's just appears to be off the shelf DC power port with 18 gauge leads. So most of your little power ports and accessories on Amazon and AliExpress, places like that, have 18-gauge leads. So, uh, you know, there you go. There's that. So at least they did use some soldering right there instead of just a standard F2 terminal. So you can see the solder joint right there. So I guess that's a positive for this positive. And if you look down there in the bottom, that's the MPPT solar charge controller that's built into this battery. And that was the cool feature I liked about this battery that it had a built-in controller. You just plug your panels in right here on the side and the battery charges itself with panels within the spec of that controller. Uh, the controller is sitting right on top of some high density foam. And if you know anything about charge controllers, they get a little bit warm. So I'd like to see some kind of shield or something, you know, between that controllers back in the circuitry right there instead of touching that high density foam which can kind of melt down so that's i'm kind of on the fence of whether calling that number eight or if we're just staying at seven and you know saying that's fine i i personally don't like it i'd rather have something behind that so do you want to call that number eight let's call that number eight they did at least use 12 gauge wire on the charge controller uh, but reason i'm going to call it number eight for sure there's no circuit protection between the MPPT and the battery, either from the PV side or to the battery side. Uh, at least I've like, seen something on the battery side to protect these wires in case this controller shorts out or something like that. So yeah, definitely uh, the charge controller, no circuit protection on a uh, foam board surface just glued down. Yeah, definitely that's, that's point number eight. And just general sloppy right there. I mean, I'm not gonna count that as another point, just note an observation that you know kind of looks thrown together if you couldn't tell already and you know the bad thing is they they put a very high quality bms in this uh parts bin right here so i've seen enough well i've seen all i need to see with this battery i'm not going to bother with the self-heating functionality checking that i'm not going to run capacity i'm not going to check high and low temp cutoff there's no need to sum it up yeah, i think it would be best to avoid this battery in its current build configuration so let me know what you think about this Vita Run model SB100H self-heating lithium iron phosphate battery. Would any of you be adventurous enough to purchase this battery in its current configuration and build format? And also, while you're there, please let me know, would you like to see the Vita Run inverter and solar panels uh, video that I worked on for, you know, quite a while. And that's what's, uh, what's so bad. I spent lots of time and I shouldn't have broke my cardinal rule of tearing down every single battery I have my hands on before showing you the battery. Just let me know if you want to see it. Enough reviews requested. I will put that video up with a prerequisite to watch this video first. Appreciate y'all. Hope you have a nice day. Y'all take care. Be safe. I will see you on the next one. And thanks to Vitarun for providing this sample to test and evaluate. Uh, y'all need some work. Big time on this one.